Most people see life as a straight line. And the longer the line, the more we think we have lived, and the more whole we suppose our lives to be. But I learned from Ben that life is a circle. Ben died on July 4th, 1986, a few days after his ninth birthday, a brief 108 months after he was born. It's the hardest thing anyone could ever have to do, to help someone they love die. But as parents, we had to help Ben face death, without pain, without fear, and ultimately, without us. Ben's line was short, but his circle had no beginning and no end. Before we get there, I just want to remind you, at the last family reunion, you boys ran off and left Carrie and Lisa by themselves. Now, they're your cousins, too, you know, and I want you to include them. But they're girls. Girls aren't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> One in four chances of having a hemophiliac baby. But you had three hemophiliac babies. Who are also three terrific little boys? Ready? Uh, let's see. Soy sauce, ginger, uh, chicken wings. Is that it? Mm -hmm. What's that? My dinner list. And what's that? My shopping list. An old mom should find time to make a list of the houses on fire. And why not? Hard to worry if you have to get organized. <laughs> Mom, Mom, Brian has a bleed. Oh, no. What happened? He's fine. He just fell. What's going on? <sighs> Nothing. Brian has a little bleed. It's no big deal. She's going to give him factor. Can we watch? Uh, Keith, I don't think we should bother Brian. No, that's OK. They can watch. Does it hurt? Nah. We've been doing it for years. I think everybody had a good time, don't you? Looked like it to me. I thought you were going to tell him about the baby. Well, I was going to. But I decided to wait until after we move into the new house. Can it just be our secret for a while? I have a stomachache. Oh, Ben. I knew you ate too much candy today. I really have to go. Dad. 
Dad, can you pull over? It's an emergency, huh? Yes. Okay, but don't think I've forgotten that tomorrow is school. It's bad, huh? Like you have to throw up? That's how chemotherapy feels, too. Look at this color. Isn't it pretty? You know what it's called? Azure. Azure? A-Z-U-R-E. It's my favorite. Hi. Hi, honey. Hello. How you doing, Jessica? You keeping Ben company? Uh-huh. That's nice. You ready to go, kiddo? Thanks, Mrs. Corman. I can't really be sure what it is until I run some tests, but from the looks of things, I'd say it's a virus or give him the diarrhea a parasite. What's a parasite? A uh, parasite is a tiny little microscopic bug that gets into your system and causes havoc. What's havoc? Havoc is, uh, uh, <laughs> is when things get out of control. Well, what do we do in the meantime? He's been running to the bathroom every half hour. Well, I'm going to give you some antibiotics that should start to take care of that. Benjamin, do you think you could spare me some blood today? I guess so. Good. Now I'll get ready while you find me a nice vein. Right arm or left? Uh, you choose. Left. My right's my pitching arm. <laughs> He has been taking them, but they're not working. He still has the stomach pain and the diarrhea. And now he's developed some kind of a rash. He's lost 10 pounds in the last two weeks, and I'm very concerned. Yeah. he's dead. He has to go down. I don't want to. Boys, please, I am on the phone. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dr. Paxton. No, I can't see. Pow, pow. Madison, calm down. <laughs> I am really sorry, Dr. Paxton. What's going on in here? Havoc. Claire, I think it'd be a good idea for you to take Ben up to a children's hospital and have them take a look at him. Claire, I, I know it's a long drive, but I'd rather you didn't wait till tomorrow. I'd like for you to get him up there tonight. The parasite is probably the cause for the cramping in the stomach, uh, but he's also got a swollen gland here on the right side of his neck and uh, a white coating in his throat. Could you open up for me, Ben? A little wider? Uh, that's good. Thank you. Sally. <laughs> Mr. Madison, Mrs. Madison, the last battery of tests weren't conclusive. So I've ordered a brain scan, a bone marrow test, and a spinal tap. Well, how long will that take? We should have the results by Friday. Four more days. Ben and I will be fine. I don't want to leave you, Claire. You have to get back to work. You have to take care of the boys. I'll be fine. Bye, buddy. Hello? Hmm? Does the baby know where it is? Well, the baby knows it's somewhere warm and safe, but I don't think it realizes exactly where. Does it know it's going to be born? I don't think it has the faintest idea. Do you remember when I was born? I sure do. 
You were my first. And it was one of the happiest days of my life. I wish I could remember. You realize this is the first time our family's ever been apart. It's going okay. The tests are pretty painful. But Greg, you will be here Friday for the meeting with Dr. Gladstone, won't you? Well, please try. I don't want to go through this alone. Claire? Dr. Gladstone's ready to see you now. Is uh, Greg coming? Yes, but uh, we live a long way from here, and he had a big remodeling project that had to be done by today. So. And he's taking care of our other two boys. He's on his way, but we can begin. All right. <clears throat> we, uh... Have some of the test results back. We're still checking out other aspects of Ben's condition. So far, we know that um, Ben does have a parasite, which is not uncommon in cases like this. Um, the swollen gland on the right side of his neck, that's uh, responding well to treatment, even though we're not quite sure of the cause. Uh, he... Uh, has a, uh, a pretty serious case of a yeast infection called thrush in his throat, which uh, can be dangerous if it's left untreated because it spreads until it effectively stops Ben's breathing. But we pretty much feel we have that under control. Claire, would you prefer to wait until Greg was here? No. Go on. Claire. Have you ever heard of the acquired immune deficiency syndrome? You mean AIDS? Man has AIDS. told that someone you love is going to die. It's as if time skips a beat. And once the clock resumes ticking, nothing is the same. I'll be right back, honey. infected. He could have received contaminated factor any time before 1981. And what about our other boys? Well, I suggest you have them tested as soon as possible. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what to expect with Ben in the future. He's the first child that we've seen here with AIDS. And all we can do is treat the symptoms as they appear. You mean the, um, Infections in the stomach aches. Right. And if you get rid of those? That's not very likely, Mr. Madison. 
But if you do... Well, if the symptoms do subside, then we can start working on the immune system. Okay, then. Let's get started. What do we do first? Mr. Madison, do you understand what we're telling you? Statistically, 85% of all AIDS patients are dead within a year. And the rest? The rest? They live a little bit longer. Eighty-five percent die within a year. One year. Twelve months. One birthday. One Christmas. One summer. One fall. One winter. One spring. Tell you something. God can make him well. You heard what they said. If they can clear up the infections, they can work on the rest. This is a brand new disease, and there are scientists all over the country working on it. There may be a cure, uh, a remission. Greg. Oh, I've been thinking about this. I just can't believe that Ben is going to die. We just need a, a small miracle, not a big one, just a little time. Thank you. Yeah, honey? What did the doctor say? What's wrong with me? Well, they found out that you do have a parasite in your stomach, like Dr. Paxton said. And that's why it hurts so much. And the white cakey stuff in your throat is an infection called thrush. And, and you have something else, a virus. It's called AIDS. Most of grown-ups get it, Ben. You're the first little boy the doctors have seen with AIDS. But they're working on a cure, and they gave us some pills for your tummy and some medicine for your throat. When am I going to get better? We don't know for sure. Come on, hop in. Maybe Ben never would get better. Maybe he would die. How do you help a dying child complete his brief but precious journey? Somehow, I had to find a way to make every day count. I had to give my little boy a stake in his own future. Tell you what, Ben. Why don't we make a list? of things to look forward to. OK. <sighs> number one. Disneyland. Remember, Mom? You said we could go to Disneyland. OK, Disneyland. What else? New baby. What do you think it's going to be, a boy or a girl? I don't know, but I hope it's a boy. Uh, another boy? 
Aren't you sick of boys yet? Nope. <laughs> we want a whole basketball team, right, Dad? <laughs> right. <laughs> and the new house. Oh, yes. Your dad's worked so hard on the new house. I can't wait. <laughs> I think we're all looking forward to that one. Yeah, with two bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> that summer, those lists became the focus of our lives. We moved into our new house, took trips, planted a garden. Brian and Zach had to be tested for AIDS, too. The tests came back negative. Already, I was developing a strategy of dividing life into small, manageable portions, milestones by which we would later measure Ben's life. These petunias are nice. Yeah. But I like these yellow things. What do you call them? Buttercups? Jonquils? Well, jonquils are bulbs, Benny. They won't bloom for a long time. How long? Not until spring. You mean a whole year? Yeah. I want jonquils. Okay. Tired, honey? A little. Well, why don't you sit down and relax? We're almost done. Okay. Mom? Did you call Jessica's mother to see if she could play? Yes, I did. But Jessica's pretty sick right now. She's back in the hospital. Is she gonna die? I don't know, Ben. We never know when anyone's going to die. That's why we have to love them while they're with us. If she did die, would she go to heaven? Would I ever see her again? I'm sure you would. If I can't see Jessica, can I go visit Grandma? We'll see. Ben asked me about dying today. Oh? He was talking about Jessica, but it's only a matter of time before he starts asking about himself. And I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. He's doing fine. Well, he isn't fine, Greg. And now he wants to go and see my mother. So let him go. You know... You're not the only person in Ben's life. I never said I was. It just so happens he is very sick. He's holding his own. And anyway, who knows? I mean, maybe it takes some time for this medicine to kick in. Craig, come on. Well, he's not getting any worse. He is fighting this thing with everything he's got. Why can't you be more positive? Will you be home? Hmm. Well, late. I'm two weeks behind on this, and the Clandons are throwing fits. 
Need any help? No. Going home. I'll see you in a while. Attention, back to school shoppers. Don't miss our two for one blue jean special on aisle four. One day only. Mom, can I get these? What, suspenders? Yeah, Mom. They're in. Sure. I bet they look great on you. Can I get some school clothes? You're too young to go to school. I know. Okay, boys, we're working on shirts here. Brian, what color do you want? Yellow. Ben? Azure. It's kind of blue. I know. I am sorry about this, believe me. But we told you that Ben had AIDS last June, and you said there would be no problem. I know, Mrs. Madison, but that was before the new school board was elected, and they feel, what with all this hullabaloo going on in New York over that child with AIDS, that they need to find out more about it. Mr. Brockett, there is no way that anyone in school could get AIDS from Ben. You can talk to our doctor about that. Thank you, Mr. Madison. I believe they'll be talking to a lot of doctors. <sighs> Mr. Brockett, what am I supposed to tell Ben? He's been waiting all summer to come back to school. Mrs. Madison, we have an obligation to all of our students. The best that I can do right now is provide Ben with a home tutor. Until when? A vote will be taken at the November school board meeting. Do you have any idea how far away that is for an eight-year-old boy? Can you check the radar screen? Yes, sir. It looks good. Any enemy spacecraft in the vicinity? Sir, I see enemy in the distance. Lasers ready. Lasers are ready. Captain, fire at will. Sir, the scanner is not functioning. Can you turn the TV set off for a minute? Yeah. I saw us before, anyway. Ben, your daddy and I saw Mr. Brockett today. My principal? Uh-huh. And he feels that it might not be such a good idea for you to start school next week. Why? Because of AIDS? You see, uh, Ben, they elected a new school board over the summer. And these folks don't know as much about AIDS as we do, and they want a little more time to learn about it. How long will it take? About two months, it looks like. Two whole months? Well, you'll sort of be going to school. They're going to send you a home tutor. I don't want a home tutor. Oh, Ben. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I know how bad you must feel. I'm disappointed. What's recess? It's the best part of the first grade. Don't forget now, you're in room one. Good morning. Good morning. Don't you look nice? I was thinking maybe I should ride my bike and show Brian the way to school. I don't know. You sure you feel up to it? It's a pretty long way. Only three blocks. In both directions. I can do it, Mom. Really.
Hello. I'll be right there. Come on, Zachy, stay with us. I'm sorry, Mom. I thought it'd be okay. Oh, no problem, honey. Don't even think about it. Benny? Benny? Honey. Honey, it's okay. It's okay. I got you. I got you. Everything's okay. We'll get you home and into bed. Mom? Can you run an ad to sell my bike? Sure. If you want me to. I didn't know it then, but Ben was trying to tell me something. He was way ahead of us. They say that unconsciously, people know when they are going to die. That even without being aware of it, they begin to prepare themselves. Sometimes they ask questions. Sometimes they withdraw. But always, they start to let go of the physical world and turn inward toward the soul. Zachy, why don't you go play on the merry-go-round? Okay. You want to sit down? Sure. I need to talk to you about Jessica. Is it something bad? You remember how she was in a coma for a couple of weeks? Then, Jessica died last night. She was my best friend. I miss her a lot. You know, Ben, you never really lose someone you love. You can keep them with you, always, in your heart. like this. Your heart can take pictures. And they're the best kind because you only take them at the most special moments. And nobody has those moments but you. Did Jessica know she was going to die, Mom? I don't know, Ben. Are you up to trying one more time? I don't think so, Grandma. Oh, sweetie, you have to eat something. Grandma? Will you be mad at me if I die? Do you think Mom and Dad will be mad at me? Honey, you, you didn't do anything wrong. They could never be mad at you. But they've had me so long. They miss me so much. Of course they would miss you. But they love you very much. And they could never, ever be mad at you. When your mother was little, she and I had made a birdhouse out of a hollow log, had kind of a slant roof on it. it wasn't nearly as fancy as this one is. Hello? Hi, Mom. Look at the birdhouse we made. 
It's beautiful, honey. We'll be finished in a few minutes, okay? Sure. Grandma and I will put your things in the van. What happened? He looks so much terrible. I know. He's okay the first couple of days, but then he couldn't keep anything down. I've tried, believe me, I've tried. Well, why didn't you call me, Mom? Well, honey, I didn't want to worry you. And I asked him if he wanted to go home, and he said, no, he really wanted to stay. Something's really wrong. I gotta get back to the hospital right away. Claire, we need to talk about something first. What is it? Ben asked me if you would be mad at him if he died. Mad at him? Why? I don't know. Well, what did you tell him? I told him that you loved him and could never be mad at him. Claire, have you talked to him about dying? Well, we've talked to him about a friend of his who died. Well, what about him? His own death? Not yet. Claire, he needs to talk to you. He can't keep any food down because of the vomiting, and his veins are collapsing because of all the IVs. So his body is not receiving any nutrition. Basically, he's starving to death. Isn't there anything you can do? Well, there is one possibility. What is it? It's a device called the Hickman catheter. It's a tube that would be inserted into Ben's chest through which nutrients would be pumped directly into his bloodstream. Wouldn't that work for Ben? We can try it, Greg. But Ben is a very sick little boy. And the Hickman is not a cure for AIDS. This is really going to make a difference. You'll see. He'll start gaining weight. He'll stop throwing up. Maybe. For a while. No. Claire, I'm telling you, I have a really good feeling about this. This catheter could really turn Ben around. It can give his body enough time to build up his strength to fight off all the infections. Craig, didn't you hear what the doctor said? This is not a cure. This isn't going to save Ben's life. There is not going to be a miracle, Greg. And we have to help Ben. Help him? We're doing everything we can. What am I supposed to do? Help him to die? We helped him take his first step. We taught him his first words. He wouldn't even let him go to the first day of school by himself. For eight years, we have helped Ben with every new step he's taken. We can't let him do this alone. How is Ben? Well, he's resting comfortably. The procedure went well. All right. Great. When can we take him home? Well, not for at least uh, five, six weeks. Dr. Gladstone, my baby is due in three weeks. Ben has to be home by then. We promised him. He's counting on it. I'm sorry, but uh, Hickman, it's extremely complicated. It's going to take you a long time to learn how to operate it properly. Well, we'll just have to learn fast, because this is important to all of us. <laughs> Claire. It's not that easy. Everything has to be timed and measured and carefully adjusted. It's going to take a lot of practice. Then we better get started. Okay. Once this is secure, is that okay, Ben? You must always remember to have this pen. The Hickman catheter bought us time. 
Time we needed to prepare ourselves and time we needed to find the wisdom to prepare Ben. As Mormons, we'd always been taught that death is not the end, that there's only a thin veil that separates this life from the next. But no matter what we believed in theory, in reality, we were still just two young parents who didn't want their son to die. Earth to Ben, time for your fuel injection. Mommy, is that all better now? Well, he's not all better, but I think he's feeling better than he was two weeks ago. Aren't you, Ben? Lots. Did you ever finish the Clandon job? Sort of. What does that mean? Well, let me put it this way. They can wash their dishes, but they got no place to put them when they're dry. I love you, Greg. <sighs> Greg. Come on, Claire. One more push. Come on, Claire. Let's go. Well. Come on. Push. Push. Come on, baby. Oh. One more push. I can see the head. Come on. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Come on, Come on. Breathe and push. Push. I love you. Good. I love you. Good. See the shoulder. Okay, come almost, on. Almost. Almost. Come on. Here it comes. Come on, oh, honey. Oh, yes. Uh, it's a boy. Another boy. Uh, we'll have him for you in just a moment. I want to see him. Let me see him. Pediatrician's report says his blood is normal. No hemophilia. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, God. <laughs> thank you. Did you hear that, Daniel? You are a perfectly healthy boy. What, what, what are you going to do if I jump? Oh, oh. If you jump him. I have to take one of these jumps. Uh -huh. mm. Where's Ben? He's taking a nap. This one is a beauty. Hi. Hi, nice to you. Nice to meet you. Hi. What do you think he looks like? Me or your dad? I think he's asleep, Mom. In the same crib you and Ben and Brian slept I in. I put some toys in there for him. Well, that was very thoughtful, Brian. Thank you. Mom. Can I hold the baby? Bet you can. Danny, this is your big brother. Hi, Danny. I'm Ben. Oh. <laughs> I'll never forget how the two of them looked that day. As if time had stopped for one brief second while they crisscrossed each other's paths. Danny just entering this new experience. Ben growing toward the next. My heart took a picture. Hi, Ben. Hi. Claire. Greg? Hi, Danny. Boy, look how big he's getting. How are things going? Good, good. That was a fine meeting. Bishop, 
I wonder if I might come see you sometime soon. Anytime. How about this afternoon? Fine. You know, Bishop, Ben is such a special boy. I'm not saying that just because he's my son. He's good, Bishop. He cares about people. He worries about their feelings. He's the kind of boy I always thought would grow up to be a fine man, who would make a great father to a family of his own. I always hoped I would see that, Bishop. But I guess it's not going to happen. Eight years seems like an awful short time. And here I am, the father, the one who's supposed to take care of him, who's supposed to be able to fix anything. But I can't stop the pain. I can't get him into school. I can't even feed him without a tube in his chest. And now he's going to die. And there's nothing I can do. Actually, there's a lot you can do, Greg. You can help get him ready. Claire keeps telling me that. But I don't know if I can do it. Sure you can. I know you. I know you have this in you. Your boy needs you right now. You got to take him by the hand and you got to walk him to the door. But then you've got to be willing to let him go. Don't you think he looks a little like me, Mom? I think he looks a lot like me. Well, you're both right. I think he looks a little like all of us. It's amazing to think we were all that little once. Wasn't it, guys? Hey, Danny. But we all were. Even Mom was a tiny little baby. Even I was. Yeah. Can you imagine your dad being as little as Danny, Zach? Uh-uh. Well, I was. <laughs> you know what else I was? What we all were when we were born? We were brand new spirits coming into this world for the very first time. See, uh, when you're born, your spirit slips into your body like a glove. It's your spirit that moves your body and gives you your thoughts and feelings. Hey, look here. Here's your spirit. And when you're born, your spirit slips into your body like that. And then for your whole life long, your spirit and your body act as one. Now, when the time comes for the spirit to leave this world, when you die, your spirit slips out of your body the same way. And even though the body dies, the spirit lives forever. You mean my body's like a glove? Yes. And my spirit goes to heaven? That's right, Ben. gonna die, Mom. Yes, Ben, you are. 
We all are, but your time may come sooner than ours. Dad? What is it like in heaven? Well, Ben, you know how you feel when you've been somewhere on a trip or a vacation? And even though you had a really great time, you can't wait to finally get home? Mm-hmm. Well, that's what it's like, Ben. It's like going home. What does it look like? Oh, it's beautiful, Ben. It's all God's creations in perfection. But I won't know anybody there. Oh, yes, you will. Someone you know will come to meet you. Someone you love. Your Grandpa Henry's there. Your Grandma Marie. And Jessica? Yes. Jessica will be there, too. Good night, Dad. I love you. I love you too, son. Dad, do they have talkers in heaven? I'm not sure about that one, Ben. Good night. believe this. This is unbelievable. You said February the 5th, and now it's the 16th. I'm sorry, Mr. Tillman. This has uh, been a rough past couple of months for me. So it's going to be kind of rough for me, too, when my wife sees this. She's planning on moving in this weekend. I, I really apologize. My boy has been pretty sick. I'm sorry about your son, Greg, but we have a contract, and I expect it to be honored. Hey, Greg, you expecting an appliance delivery? Yeah, tell him just to leave it out front. I'll tell you what, Mr. Tillman. Can your wife wait till Monday? Hey, Greg, uh, can I talk to you a second? Excuse me. All right. Hey, you got finishing nail there? This guy says this is COD. COD? We've got an account with these people. Yeah, I know. He says you got behind and, I don't know, I guess they canceled. Pancreatitis. What does that mean? It means you'll be on heavy painkillers. There's nothing else you can do? No. Not given all the other complications. How long will we be here? I don't know, Claire. Ben may not be up to going home again. He won't be waking up for a couple of hours. I'll be back then. Thank you, Doctor. Your mother can take the boys home with her. No. No, I want the boys here. We can't do it anymore, Greg. Me and Danny up here with Ben. You alone half the time? The boys shipped off to my mother's? We could put Brian in the hospital school and you could drive up three or four times a week. We have to be a family, a whole family, for as long as we can. Okay. 
Let's do it. Don't be afraid to ask questions or to tell them something about yourselves. You can even play a game with them if they feel up to it. The reason you all are here is to keep the children company and to help them forget why they're here for a while. Let's see. Uh, all the rooms on this floor are available to you, so feel free to just wander in and introduce yourselves. The children are used to volunteers up here, so they'll be happy to see you. Once again, I want to thank you all for volunteering your time to Children's Hospital. And, uh, well, let's, let's get started, all right? Hmm? Yeah, she's real good. Oh, yeah, that's the Walker boy. He's right over there in 118. Uh, excuse me, just a minute. Um, the little boy in there has AIDS. Oh. Okay. Saki. Ben does not feel good. Now come and play with Danny. Every part of your body starts to relax. You just feel a total sense of peace. Oh. When can I get some more painkiller? Listen to me, Ben. If they keep giving you medicine all day, all you're going to do is sleep. You'll be too tired to see Daddy when he gets here. Is that how you want to spend the rest of your time? Just sleeping? No. How about this? Why don't we make a scale of one to ten? One is when there's no pain. Ten is the worst. And when it gets really bad, I promise you I'll make sure that they give you something. You think you could do that? Okay. So what number is the pain now? Four. Okay. Then why don't we wait? You want to watch TV? Mm-mm. You want to read? Mm -mm. Come on, buddy. Give me some help. What do you want to do? I'll play the violin. Yes, I'm calling about the violin lessons. I have a terminally ill little boy. Yes, Tuesdays would be fine. He has AIDS. Oh, I understand. Thank you very much. Boys, will you stop it, please? I can't hear myself think. When are we going for pizza? As soon as your dad gets here. Can we go visit Ben? Ben is still sleeping. Well, can't we go somewhere? Okay, just let me finish this first. Yes, I'm calling about some violin lessons. kid. By the next time you come, Dad, I'll know three by mice. One of my all-time favorites. <laughs> I guess I better be hitting the road. I got a long drive ahead of me. And some people I know need to get to sleep. Oh. Say goodnight to Ben, boys. Hey, Ben. Thanks. Good night, Ben. Good night. Good night, son. Good night. I'll see you this weekend. Good night, Benny. In the morning.
So what do you say? You want to go for a burger? Oh, thanks, Joe. I got to get up to the hospital. Oh, man. It's a hell of a commute. How long does that take you? Oh, a little over two hours. Listen here, Greg. <clears throat> I know you got a lot of money problems with the hospital and all. If it helps, you can just hang on to my paycheck for a while. I appreciate that, Joe. But uh, I wouldn't begin to solve the problem. Besides, you got your own family to look after. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't mean to pry. I just, I guess I was wondering how you're going to pay your bills. I don't know. Ambulance, please. I think she calls in a couple weeks. My name is Claire Madison. My husband was just brought in. Madison, he's right down here. Greg? It's okay, honey. I'm all right. What happened? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Greg, it can't be nothing. You're in the emergency room. I thought it was a heart attack. It was a severe anxiety attack, Mrs. Madison, which can feel exactly like a heart attack, and sometimes even worse. He's lucky he didn't black out on the road. Well, will he be all right? If he takes it easy and gets some rest. Now, I've given him some mild tranquilizers, but he's got to slow down for a while. And I suggested that he go talk to somebody. Hey, I don't need a psychiatrist, all right? I'm fine. OK, you stay here, and I'll go get the car. Claire. Honey, please. You have to take care of yourself. What about you? You need rest, too. Craig, I don't care about me. I am fine. I just want you to be well. I need you to be well. OK. OK. Code blue, room 116. Code blue, room 116. That's Ben's room. Come on, boys. Sally? OK. He's having a seizure, Claire. I'll watch the kids. You go on in. Take this, Abby. Could you call Greg? Yes. Oh, hold him. Watch his head there. Watch it. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Watch his head. Ben. Get suction ready. Ben. Hey, hold on a second. Let me, let me get this under control, huh? Hold him. I don't want him to hurt himself. Get over there. Watch it. Watch it. Give me respiratory. Stat. Watch it. Watch it. Easy. Volume's kicking in now. Starting to work. That's right. Gonna be fine, buddy. Gonna be just fine.
I'm afraid that's not possible, Leah. He's much too sick to go home now. That's not what he means. You look exhausted. I am, I guess. Where's Greg? He went home. He had to get back to work. Will he be back tomorrow? No. The doctor said he had to cut down on the commuting. Puts a lot of extra pressure on you. I guess. But there doesn't seem to be much choice. Sally, can I ask you something? Sure. You've been around so many dying children. What is it like for them? Well, when they first begin the death experience, they go into a kind of trance. Uh, they're not unconscious, but it's like they're only half here. And they most always talk about seeing a light. Usually it's at the end of a long tunnel. And they want to go towards it. But a lot of times they're torn between going and leaving the ones that they love behind. But when they do finally let go, uh, a look of tremendous peace comes over them. Released. Hi. Hi. My name's Jeff. What's yours? Mind if I sit down for a while? Sure. Are you a doctor? No. <laughs> but uh, I'm just a volunteer, but I'm thinking about being a doctor. You have to give a lot of shots. Oh, you hate shots, huh? I used to. Now they give me all my medicine, my hip. Captain will. Sir, this so is what are you watching, Megatron? You know about Megatron? Hey, Megatron happens to be my absolute favorite cartoon. Mine too. Fire. Yeah? Well, you know what they say, great minds think alike. Yeah. Hi, honey. Hi, Mom. This is Jeff. He's a volunteer. He liked Megatron too. Hi, Jeff. I'm Claire. Hi. And the sleepy guy here is Danny. We've never had a volunteer visit us before. What do you do? Well, we uh, spend time with the kids so their parents can take a break. Yeah. Why don't you take a break, Mom? <laughs> I don't think I better, honey. Well, it's it's OK. I, I can hang around for a couple of hours. Really, Mom? Relax. <laughs> OK. Do you like Star Wars? I've seen all three movies five times. I've seen them six. <laughs> I don't know who needed Jeff more, Ben or me, but he was truly a gift. Because Jeff hadn't known Ben before, he had no sense of loss, no sadness. His pure enjoyment of their time together lifted Ben's spirits, which in turn lifted mine. On the good days, we cherished every laugh and every smile. On the bad days, <laughs> we longed for the good days. I'm gonna die, you know. Hey, don't say that. Why? 
Well, be because you don't know that for sure. Yes, I do. Are you scared? No. Hey, wait a second. This time he's getting all tangled. You'd make a good doctor. You think so, huh? Yeah. And I've known a lot of doctors. <laughs> My mom and dad told me that when you die, you don't hurt anymore. And that it's not scary because somebody you love, somebody who's already gone, comes to meet you. But you know what I think? I think that if you want to, you can be a guardian angel for somebody special. Somebody really special. Maybe I'll be a guardian angel for you. So if you could bring some of the board games from upstairs, downstairs, I'd really appreciate it. Excuse me. Yes. Jeff, isn't it? Yes. You've been spending a lot of time with the Madison boy. Well, that's right. Well, I thought we spoke about that. You mean about AIDS? Yes, AIDS is a contagious disease. You know, Mrs. Pearson, his parents, his brothers, even a little baby are in there all the time, so I don't think there's much to worry about. Listen, it's my job to worry about it. You're a volunteer. Well, then I volunteered to be that kid's friend. I don't even have to look. I'm having a filet mignon, medium rare. Mm, sounds good to me. So, say something. Flirt with me. It's the first romantic place we've been to in months. <laughs> oh, I uh, don't flirt with married women. Well, we don't have to tell my husband. What's he like, this, uh, this husband of yours? He's handsome and loving and strong. Greg? Greg, just sit still and take deep breaths. Go deep. No, uh, I don't want anything right now. Thanks. Uh, you go ahead and order. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I didn't say anything. It, it just comes on without warning. Greg, you have got to talk to someone. No. What are you so afraid of? Maybe it would help. I am not going to go spilling my guts out to some stranger who I have to pay to listen to me. And what am I going to tell him? That my son is dying? And that I feel like I'm dying too? How do you think I feel, Greg? I am scared, too. But I can't just run off and hide behind some stress attack. Well, we all can't be as perfect as you are, Claire. Oh, that's right, Greg. Just take your feelings and run. And leave me to handle things just like you've been doing. Now, wait a minute. You seem to have conveniently forgotten the last 10 years. I have always been there for you, haven't I? Don't you know how much I hate the fact that I'm not there for you now? Don't you think it tears me apart every time I leave you and Ben in that hospital? Can't you understand that? I want to understand, Greg. I do. I know there's things we're going to have to work on. But right now, we got to put those things aside and be together for Ben.
When the pain reached a nine, we decided to take Ben home. There was nothing more the doctors could do. Ben's circle was starting to close now. We knew that. And we wanted to embrace him with our love until the circle was complete. Daddy like that. Maybe my cap guns to Zach. You know, Ben, sometimes when people want to give some of their things away, they write a will. What's a will? It's a list of your possessions and who you'd like to give them to. You want to write one? and give my last will and testament. Electric car, Zach, dinosaur, Danny, water pistols, Keith and Randy, sled, Carrie and Lisa, Pinewood Derby car, Ryan. How's everything? The pain is pretty constant now. We had to increase the painkiller, so Ben sleeps most of the time. I came over because Greg and I have a big favor to ask of you. We would like you to make Ben's casket. That would be hard for me, Claire. I know that. But if you could, it would mean a lot to us. And I know it would mean a lot to Ben. Hi there. How are you feeling? I don't know. Okay, I guess. Ben? I just want you to know something. I am 
really proud to be your father. I want you to know that, Ben. You have brought so many riches into my life. I'm honored to have you as my son. George. I can't do it. Every nail's like. Knife in my heart. George. Don't you understand what the kids are asking? They're asking for us to put our arms around Ben and Bill, just as we always have in life. see a light, Benny. A beautiful, shining light. Far away, at the end of a long tunnel. And your spirit will lift up out of your body and start to travel toward the light. And as you go, a veil will be lifted from your eyes, and suddenly you'll see everything. But most of all, you will feel a tremendous sense of love. No, Penny, not long at all. this tonight. I have to. Why don't you go on in? I'll be in in a while. Ghost, come here, honey. Come sit with me. You must have had a bad dream. Uh-uh. It was Ben. He told me he's not gonna hurt anymore. He came to say goodbye and that he loved me.
Is the veil getting very thin, Benny? Can you see the light? We love you, Ben. We love you very much. <laughs>